Hello everyone, I've returned to Wortham Park for a little bit of a solo round. I want to do another, you know, best throw, best shot, best disc round to sort of allow me to practice some more. I uh, have been working on my cross step. I'm down to a three step cross step. And as you may have seen in a couple of my previous videos by this point, that seems to be working a little bit better for me. There's no better place to uh, do some further testing than this course, in my opinion, anywhere close to where I live. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, have a little fun. One of the reasons I say this is one of the better locations to uh, try this out is the tee pads. They are unusually short and not always pointing in the right direction. That said, this is what I'm going to be attempting my short little walk up on. All right, I did a little bit of a test run, and this is so short, I can't even get more than two steps on it. So I'm gonna go next to the tee pad. That'll work, that rolled just past the tee pad. A little too high, but it got down there. All right, so this one's surprisingly close. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it. All right, so Houston is a relatively flat city, so it's gonna be fairly windy most of the time anyways. Uh, hopefully I stay dialed in despite the wind, but uh, every time I come to Wortham Trail, I kind of regret <laughs> uh, just how windy it is. Also, the, this is like maybe a four foot long tee pad, so I'm just going to throw from just to the side of it. You can get my feet. Got the distance I wanted, a little bit turned, but it is a leopard. I exceeded the distance of the basket and I turned it pretty hard, unfortunately. All right, so the good news is the FD was pin high to the basket. The bad news is about 40 feet to that direction, about the same distance from this. I'm only just going to this one because it's closer to the PT pad, but they're about the same distance. Gonna take a couple shots to get close to the basket. All right, so in theory, I can run it. That's my overstable disc, so naturally it's gonna fade pretty hard. <laughs> All right, so this is what I like to call good enough. All right, the basket is a fair bit distance away, and just like with hole one, hole three's tee pad is pointing towards the wrong basket. Hole one, actually, the tee pad on hole one points towards the basket that's for hole three and vice versa, so that's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. And as to be expected, I'm ignoring this tee pad. I think I'm gonna need something with a little more overstability. be honest with you, I wish I could dial it in like this on a competitive round, instead of this sort of goofy best sort of round that I'm doing. That's more what I expect whenever I putt. That said, beggars can't be choosers. This one is a little bit of a stretch, even for me. I'm gonna really need to have some things dialed in to uh, make a good shot here.
All right, so this is pretty decent. As you can tell, I'm using overstable to straight discs as opposed to my leopard because of this street. I'm actually kind of afraid of throwing my disc into the street. All right, two chances to get this close. getting better with my sidearm flick forehand bit because I'm going to probably end up relying on that in the future given how long it's taking for me to get better at the backhand. Though I'm seeing some backhand improvements here thanks to this new cross step. Again, this is what I like to see from 80 feet out is to basically <laughs> be able to do that. This is one of the fortunate situations where the tee pad and the basket actually match up. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing from just side of the pad, but I'm probably going to end up being a little bit beyond it with, by the end of my cross step. I've got wind in my way, so I don't really expect a lot of great things from a leopard, so I'm going to try to hyzer it a little bit more. We'll see how it goes. How's that in the ground? Got some wind coming this way, but a little bit towards me. So I'm gonna need something a little straight to stable. Four. Wah. Alrighty. At least I've got one good throw. All right, hopefully here's a chance to make up for mistakes on my throws. And without fail, here is another example of a tee pad not facing the direction of the basket. Last time I was here, I shot in the direction of the, <laughs> uh, the tee pad and I was wildly off. Cost me a, a good stroke. So I'm going to learn from that lesson. I'm going to do a walk up to the right of the tee pad. All right, wish me luck. I'm going to need it. So the reason I went with this T-Bird is I wanted to let loose a little bit and I figured my throw would turn a little bit and this would combat that. However, I ended up throwing it fairly straight and it took the path that it did. That said, it didn't reach my Leopard, which I threw pretty straight and it went straight the whole way through and I used a little bit less power for this throw. To combat the sun, I've oriented the camera that way so you can see me throwing in the basket. Now both of these are an acceptable distance to putt, but thankfully my sidearm wall thing has got me closer. I don't know what to say about that. All right, so it's absolutely ridiculous, but these tee pads are exactly six feet long and no less. So I'm gonna throw from the edge of one, but I'm gonna be just to the right of it because I can't handle that short, even with a three-step cross step. I'm having okay luck with this disc today. Hopefully I'll continue to have such luck. I catapulted that, so it turned prematurely. All 
Alright, I'm still a good distance away from the basket, so... I don't know how I do better than that. Okay, I guess that's out. <laughs> Alright, I put my bag next to where my Rock 3 landed about two, three feet further off in the distance than this pig. I'm gonna go with this pig anyways because the sun's behind me. Another deal where the tee pad is just off from the basket. Regardless, I'm not even gonna use the tee pad. I think I'm gonna to have to use a mid-range here. I think the chance of missing with the driver is way too much. Here's my Manta. I'm going to have to use Mako 3 for a straight mid range. I can't really complain. My Manta was just over there, but these are not what I expected. I should have committed to those previous throws, kicking myself for not doing that. Alright, it is what it is, hole nine. Let me see what I can do. Man, I went way over that. Let me throw something a little slower. Ah, uh, turned it. Wah. All right, so if I must be honest, uh, I've been overcooking these when I'm doing the cross step because the cross step has more power to it. So I'm getting more distance. Yay, but I think I'm getting less control. Last two times I was here, I birdied this and the best throw, and now I can't even get close. <laughs> so, I'm trying not to be down about it, but. And I cooked that. Slow down, I think. Oh well, easy layup for a par. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Um, I can't really complain about my score here, especially since I'm able to sort of dial things in a little bit using best throw, but we'll wrap it up over there. All right, so I think it's just one of those things I'm gonna have to come to terms with that my sidearm is just naturally better than my backhand, and I'm able to see what I'm doing the whole time and aim better, even though I'm not throwing sidearm as good as a lot of you that are watching these videos, but that's okay. I'm miles behind in terms of, you know, time and effort spent on sidearm, so maybe I can develop a bit more for that. Backhand, I just feel that I've changed too many things in the last several months since I've been uh, filming this on YouTube, particularly with adding movement, and so that's something I've got to get used to. Anyways, I, I hate to end this on a dour note. I had a lot of fun for the most part, but I think the last three holes, I felt like I was sort of tapering off with my backhand so I felt like I just felt like I needed to use my sardine better I think around hole five is when I determined that and uh, can't really complain I mean I am getting better and I'm just gonna go wrap up this rambling thing thank you very much for watching and have a great day